Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the concept called as dynamic method dispatch. This concept is a, this is one of the concept in Java, which comes under the category of inheritance. As we know in Java, Java is an object oriented programming language and three main concept in object oriented programming are encapsulation, polymorphism and inheritance. Dynamic method dispatch comes under the category of inheritance. And one of the important concepts in inheritance is method overriding, where if you have two classes, superclass and subclass, and if subclass inherits from superclass, the subclass methods take precedence. When, you, when we have a similar method in subclass and superclass with the same type of arguments and same number of arguments, subclass methods take precedence and thereby the method of superclass is overridden by the method of the subclass. So this is method overriding concept which is part of inheritance. So when it comes to dynamic method dispatch, it says that a call to an overridden method is resolved at runtime rather than compile time. So we will be seeing how by resolving it runtime uh, and um, why it does not resolve at compile time and what are the difference between them. So this video is all about discussing various examples to understand this concept of dynamic method dispatch. One of the important concepts which we also use here is that is the idea that a super class variables can be referenced to subclass objects. So we'll be using um, both these concepts to understand dynamic method dispatch. So let us take few examples and understand how it happens. So here we have three classes. First class is example one, second class is A1, third class is B1. This B1 class extends A1, which means B1 is inheriting from class A1. So it inherits the methods and variables of A1. We have only one method, which is call me in class A1. And the same method is also present in B1. And the type of, there are no arguments in both the cases. So uh, it is having a similar method and similar type of arguments. So there is a scope for method overriding. So as call me function, which is in B1, which is a subclass of class A1. And therefore, call me function of B1 take precedence as compared to the call me function in A1. So when we come to example one, this example one has created an instance of B1 with object small b. And we also have A1 is R, which means R is a of R is a variable of type A1. And uh, we are assigning R equal to B. This is where we are in we are uh, using the concept of superclass variables assigned to subclass objects. So R is a superclass variable of class A1 and B is a object of class B1, which is the subclass object. So we are assigning superclass variable to the subclass object, which is possible. But this execution hope happens only during runtime because B, which is equal to new of B1, the new method, new will function effectively when during the runtime because memory allocation everything happens during runtime so r equal to b also will be working during runtime so during the compile time it just checks for the syntax and it moves forward where we call r dot call me so when we call call me method so here first during the compile time r is of type a1 so and also it checks whether there is a call me method in a1 so it is indeed present so there is no error but during the runtime r is equal to b which means r will be executed or r will be similar to the sub subclass object b so when we call r dot call me during the runtime it executes the call me method which is present in b1 class because method overriding has happened and therefore subclass method takes precedence. So call me method of B1 is executed and therefore we see the output as in class B1. So this is the first case. 
when it comes to the next case where we have the same kind of three classes example 1 a1 and b1 and b1 inherits from a1 but the b1 class has method call me which takes a string as an argument whereas a1 class does not have call me method but it does not take any input argument which means that there is no scope for method overriding because although the method names are same but the parameters and the type of parameters are not same so therefore here method overloading happens and not method overriding so when we invoke the r is equal to b during the compile time r uh, uh, does not have any effect but during the compile time when you call r dot call me call me does not have any argument and uh, our r which is of type a1 during a compile compile time uh, also does not have any argument so there is no issue and during runtime when r is assigned with the subclass object b it checks for methods in b1 class b1 class since it has overloaded now there are two methods one with argument and one without argument but the one which is requested is without argument so it executes the call me method without argument which is here uh, in class a1 so which is present in class a1 so that's why we see the output in class a1 so this is the second case where we have uh, where method overriding is not taking place but method overloading is happening because although the method names are same the type of arguments are different so this is a second case now when we come to the third case where instead of calling without arguments in the example one class so r dot call me has a string as an input so let us see what happens if you give a string as an input the idea is same class a1 has call me method without argument and class b1 has uh, call me method with argument so during the compile time r would be of type a1 and when it comes to r dot call me which means the call me method of a1 class because r is of met, uh, type a1 during the compile time so it checks for a method in class a1 with argument but there is no method in class a1 with uh, call me function with an argument so it throws out error directly so this is very important because r is equal to b where a superclass variable is assigned to a subclass object which happens only during the runtime during the compile time r is of type a and it looks for a method here it is looking for a method call me with an argument and that is not present in class a1 and therefore we see an error so let's see an other case so here we are having the call me method in example one uh, all dot call me with string as an argument but our a1 class now has call me method with an argument and whereas our class b1 has call me method without argument so we have swapped it so in this case during the compile time r is of type a1 and it checks for call me method with argument and that is exactly present in class a1 so class a1 also contains call me method with an argument so during the compile time there is no error so when it comes to the runtime r is equal to b comes into picture where r will have sim behave similar to object b uh, so during the runtime r dot call me here method overloading is happening because call me of class b1 and call me of class a1 are different and therefore we when we call r which is of, of equivalent to object b it has two methods call me without argument and call me with argument and therefore since we need a call me method with argument so it executes the one which is present in uh, with argument so therefore uh, we see the output in class a1 hello so method overloading is happening here instead of method overriding so that's the case when it comes to the next case 
where you have r dot call me without argument whereas in a1 class you have a call me method with argument so during the compile time it checks r is of type a1 and it checks for call me method without argument in class a1 but we don't have such a method in class a1 where call me method does not have an argument so therefore uh, it throws out an error so these cases are important to understand to know how during the runtime uh, the object r the r is behaving in a different way and how during the compile time r behaves so method dynamic method dispatch uh, is about uh, finding out so as we saw earlier a a call to an overridden method is resolved at runtime rather than at compile time so during the runtime we actually uh, resolve the what how it is overridden and uh, not during the compile time so we have seen with different examples and we have also seen how this idea that superclass variables can be referenced to subclass object the vice versa is not true we can't uh, reference a subclass variables to a superclass object we can only do superclass variables to a that can be referenced to a subclass object so this is about dynamic method dispatch and the examples related to it thank you